Good morning, friends. We are again back. As you have been noticing that we are continuing our understanding about aerofoil. I am trying to add some features which are directly designers feature. So far when I was discussing our attention was focused to subsonic flow aircraft for subsonic regime. Subsonic means we categorize that Mach number less than 0.3. To be more precise, what we were discussing was primarily incompressible flow, right? which is still lower than 0.3. Fairly we are assuming that density at its east point remain constant. There is no change in density of the medium which is interacting with the body. But as you know, we always aspire to increase the speed. The problem with or the challenge is when we increase speed is so far what assumption we had incompressible may not be true as all of us understand air is actually compressible but for our practical purpose we have categorized as incompressible flow. The moment we try to cross Mach 0.3 roughly we need to be bothered about compressible features which I need to know when I design or select an aerofoil. For example, the cruise Mach number could be order of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, like that. I may love to go for 0.86. Who stops me going further or who cautions me if you are going further, you have to do something extra. We all know that as I increase Mach number, there is a formation of shock wave that results in drag, that may result in flow separation. So immediately you have to bother about the engine power, to bother about the structural weight, you have to bother about vibration associated with shock waves, the flow separations. Therefore, for a subsonic airplane or high subsonic airplane, what we look for to avoid formation of shock or delay that, that should be in our mind. When I am writing here subsonic airplane, typically by definition subsonic, you know, it should be Mach number less than 1. At Mach 1 on around 1, we call it transonic and greater than 1, we call it supersonic. But you have seen here subsonic and then subsequently I have written Mach less than 0.3 what I am trying to tell in a, in a ritualistic manner that we are talking about an airplane design where flow is incompressible. But as I go for high subsonic, that flow incompressible assumption will not work. So what this is going to mean for selection of aerofoil, what I should know to select appropriate aerofoil, that I will be discussing in short now. Let us take an example. You will find today's lecture, there will be material which I have taken from Anderson book of airplane performance. So you can go through airplane performance on this topic and you must read. I have been always telling, this is a design course. You need to read, you need to see the data, you have to Google for data, Google for definitions. Then only you can really get a feel for design. So let us take case here. And let's say Mach number is 0.3. You all know Mach number is nothing but velocity of aircraft, velocity of sound at that altitude. 
right? So it is 0.3, and now you know because of this contour, the flow will accelerate. And at some point, the flow will accelerate to maximum speed, and let's say that is m peak. Let's say this is 0.435. The question is, first of all, as the speed is increasing from 0.3 to 0.435, the pressure at m peak will, the pressure will, the static pressure will go down. And wherever I get maximum speed, the corresponding pressure, the minimum pressure, pressure point, This directly comes from Bernoulli's because throughout the flow, the total pressure, stagnation pressure remains constant. So it, either it gets converted into kinetic energy or the potential energy, that sort of a conversion goes on. But here, please understand, this minimum pressure point, if you intuitively you think that it should happen where T by C is maximum, then that will be wrong. The intuition fails here because the minimum pressure point will not just depend upon local T by C, it will depend upon the whole flow conditions. So keep this back of your mind. Yes, the velocity of maximum or M peak will correspond to minimum pressure point. However, it is not that it will always occur at where T by C is maximum. But generally, that is what the mistakes being done. And that is why you have seen when we define Naka aerofoil series, there is a nomenclature driven guidance that yes, it will tell the minimum pressure point is at 0.4 times chord, which is not necessarily the T by C maximum location. Right. Now similar, uh, same air, uh, airfoil, and let's say I increase mark to 0.772. When I'm saying M, I mean M infinity, that is free stream Mach number, 0.772. So on the same aerofoil, at minimum pressure point, the flow will accelerate. At minimum pressure point, let's say this becomes 0.772. Let me correct this. Let's say from 0.3, I'm going to 0.5. I repeat. From 0.3, I increase the free stream Mach number to 0.5, and let's say M peak, that means the pressure minimum, the speed is Mach equal to 0.772. Now I do further, I increase M infinity to 0.61, and same aerofoil, we find at minimum pressure point, M peak is 1.0. So the critical Mach number is defined like this. What is that free stream Mach number for which, for the first time, any point in the aerofoil has reached Mach 1? So if you see, if I see this three data, I know it is Mach M infinity 0.61 at this Mach number. For the first time, M peak has become 1.0. So my critical Mach number is 0.61. Right? What is so important about critical Mach number? You understand the moment you talk about local Mach number going to 1, so there will be change in the flow structure. We know the shock wave interaction will start coming up. The moment there is a shock wave generation, 
or some sort of interaction of shock wave and boundary layer, there will be dissipation of energy and it may lead to flow separation as well. So there is a rise in the drag. So if I want to really design a high speed or high subsonic airplane, I should ensure that M critical should be as high as possible. for a high subsonic airplane. That is the importance of M critical. And when you select an aerofoil, suppose you want to design an airplane or design a wing for a given airplane where you want the speed to be around 0.6 or 0.7, then this question, this criteria, this requirement becomes predominant in selecting the aerofoil. So I should look for an aerofoil which has larger M critical. Second stage, I should look for a wing which has larger M critical. So when I'm saying wing to, to aerofoil or aerofoil to wing, I am telling that not only aerofoil shape, but something you can do with the wing to increase the M critical or critical Mach number. With this understanding, we'll now see what explicitly it means. First question will come, how do I determine M critical? Let us have a closer look on M critical. I'll be writing few equations. These are important if you want to develop a field for numbers. Some understanding of that should help you. Whenever I'm talking about M critical, we use the point that the speed accelerates to a peak speed or peak Mach number where the pressure is minimum. So we're talking about pressure. In a non-dimensional form, we talk about pressure coefficient, which is P minus P infinity by half rho V squared. P is the static pressure, and P infinity is the ambient pressure. That gives you a differential pressure. If CP is negative means you have a suction. We all understand that, right? The whole game is on critical Mach number and all, whole game is on minimum pressure point because that is where the velocity will be maximum, that is where the Mach number will be maximum. So we will check at minimum pressure point whether Mach has become 1 or not. That is why we are using this CP. This I can further simplify to write P infinity by Q infinity to P by P infinity minus 1. And of course, you know what is Q infinity is dynamic pressure of rho V square. Now, I write Q infinity is equal to half rho infinity V infinity square, which is half rho infinity by gamma P infinity you will see why this has been written and multiplied by gamma p infinity into v infinity square. What I have done, half rho infinity v infinity square, which is dynamic pressure, I have multiplied by gamma p infinity and divided by gamma p infinity. And we know that, we know that A is equal to the speed of sound, well, speed of sound can be expressed as gamma p by infinity rho, rho under root. And if I do this with a further clarification, A infinity free stream will be gamma P infinity by rho infinity. So I can further write Q infinity as gamma by 2 P infinity M infinity square. Right. You see from here, this A infinity is gamma P infinity by rho infinity. So this becomes 1 by A infinity comes here. So that becomes M infinity square. And gamma is here, P infinity here, here it remains, and 2 is here. Fantastic. Good. We also know from isentropic relationship,
where P naught is the total pressure, P is the static pressure, and how conversion goes on with Mach number is given by this isentropic relationship. In this relation, you know, M is Mach number, gamma is ratio of specific heats, and value is typically 1.4. These things all you know, and this is isentropic relationship. The assumption is here, the total pressure remains constant in a subsonic domain, right? Total means P naught, and like a tank. That pressure is there, further conversion will happen, depending upon become some, some kinetic energy gets converted through this pressure energy, but the total P naught remains constant, and this relationship is given by, by this relationship, which is based on isentropic assumptions. And then you can write P by P infinity, or P naught by P infinity, it will be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2, m infinity square gamma by gamma minus 1. I am using this relationship on the p, I am replacing by p infinity where the ambient condition is pre stream condition. Using these two relationships, we will get Cp is equal to 2 by gamma m infinity square 1 plus gamma minus 1 m infinity square by 1 plus half gamma minus 1 m square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 minus 1. Don't get carried away by all these expressions. These are, you have to see once for all to understand what is the CP critical or is the m critical. How do you, as a designer, how do you extract information out of it? If this is the pressure coefficient, then CP critical, if I am to ask you, how do you find out? What was CP critical? CP critical is uh, that pressure coefficient which corresponds to M critical. And what is M critical? M critical was the free stream Mach number for which, for the first time, there is a Mach 1 on the aerofoil. So, Wherever Mach 1 has achieved, that is, so the first time Mach 1 has achieved here, so what is that CP critical means? What is the value of CP here that we are talking about for a given M infinity? This should be clear. So if I want to find out CP critical from here, that means I am assuming all the free stream is M infinity, but this M has become local mark, has become 1 for the first time. Is this understanding clear? If that is so, then just have to put 1 here, and I get expression of CP critical as 2 gamma M infinity square 2 plus gamma minus 1 M infinity square by gamma plus 1. gamma by gamma minus 1, minus 1. These expressions you can directly see in Anderson's book, Introduction to Flight. So what we are seeing, we are seeing CP critical is function of M infinity. It's very, very important observation. And you will find that, so we have realized what is CP critical. And you could see that CP critical varies with m infinity and you have explained why. Now we want to find what is that Mach number, what is that m infinity for which Cp becomes Cp critical so that I know what is m critical, right? This is Cp. Take an aerofoil, do some experiment and find out what is the value of CP0, especially when I am writing CP0, we are talking about very low speed. And let's say that point is CP0 here. How do you calculate CP0? You find 
for a given low speed, let's say point 0.1 Mach number, find the minimum pressure, minimum pressure through measurement. And then, once I know CP0, I can give a correction divided by 1 by infinity, m infinity square to find out how this CP is changing with Mach number. And if I do this, this will follow this sort of a variation. And this is the point because this is the locus of m critical or this is the locus of CP critical for different Mach number. So this point will give me M critical, as simple as that. I'll try to solve one example so that you know how to exactly find it out. This part was necessary so that you take, we all take M critical very seriously. If you are thinking of designing an airplane, high speed, high subsonic, the M critical will play a very important role along with another Mach number, what we call drag divergence Mach number. Drag divergence Mach number. So after M critical, we will be now revising ourselves what is drag divergence Mach number. I am sure you people have done this in your aerodynamics course, but it is important that we do a proper revision so that we are ready to use this understanding in aircraft design, especially selecting aerofoil and wing platform. You are well aware that CD versus Mach number it goes like this, right? Up to point A. There is a point B and there is a point C, let us say. This up to point A on around what I am presenting here, typically let us say around point 6, all the aerodynamic coefficients, they remain constant. They do not show much dependence on Mach number. But beyond that, we we'll find there is a dependence with Mach number. This number may be 0.7, something like that. And around 1, you all know that there is a peak rise in the drag coefficient, which we all understand because now shock formation is there, and which is a, having a dissipative property. So resistance increases and the drag increases. But this rise, after a certain point, very sharp rise is there. You see it like this. So there is a point C or D I call. There's a point D which is called drag divergent Mach number. Divergent Mach number. This is typically that Mach number from this plot you can get it where D C D by D M is typically around 0 0.05. This is a, some sort of a thumb roll. Ideally, you should uh, do a wind tunnel testing and you could find out where there's a sharp rise. But mostly people agree this is a good thumb roll. Wherever DCD by DM is around 0 0.05, you call that Mach number, corresponding Mach number is MDD. Why that is important? If you cross beyond MDD, the drag rise will be very, very sharp. So what is important for us? We select an aerofoil, select an wing so that M critical should be large, M DD also should be large. So that I can fly with more aerodynamic efficiency with drag being lower at high speeds. That is the purpose, right? That is why we are going through this understanding. And the third part which will come, so let me write M DD is that M where DCD by DM locally is around 0 
You know, in aerodynamic perception or the way he tries to visualize, he will translate all of these through three diagrams. He'll say, if this is the aerofoil and M is fairly less than one, M locally M less than one, this is, I write M infinity less than M critical because there are no shockwave generation at any point. That is, at any point, the flow is not reaching locally Mach 1, so always less than 1. So we say M infinity is less than M critical. If second condition, where M critical is more than M infinity plus less than M drag divergence, then yes, locally where the velocity accelerates to a local condition where for the first time Mach number equal to 1, so there is a envelope where Mach is greater than 1 and after that Mach is less than 1. So this is the condition if you are flying little above critical Mach number. But if you are having third condition where m infinity is greater than m dd, then you will have and definitely will have formation of a shock wave and this will result in lot of drag, even flow separation, this shock will interact with boundary layer, there will flow separation, and which is not desirable for any efficient flight performance, right? So these are the two different views. From my, my designer's perspective, I say fine, tell me how to select an aerofoil where MDD is large, tell me where, how to select a wing where MDD is large, Tell me how to select an aerofoil where M critical is large. Tell me how to select an aerofoil where M DD is large. The designer looks for that. Either he looks for database, he looks for some empirical relationship. But what to look for, he only knows when he understands these things at the back end of his understanding. Right? That is why I am touching upon this. There is another aspect of handling this critical Mach number or delaying rise in drag, you know that is called uh, sweep. Before we come to sweep, just see what sort of revolution happens just to handle M critical and M drag divergence. Why there is a formation of shock wave here? Because you have designed the contour in such a way the flow accelerates and very fast it goes to the Mach number one, depending upon free stream condition. So that is decided by the contour here. If this contour is redesigned, I can delay the formation of Mach number, which is here, it could be somewhere here, it could be somewhere here. Right? I can always delay that. So that was the understanding when super critical aerofoil came into existence. Primarily this delays drag divergence Mach number. Very, very important because you wanted to fly at a high subsonic. Right? Most of your airplane Dreamliner or how all those, they are inspired by this. If you Google it, you will find that. Of course, they are customized aerofoil, but it is inspired by this understanding. What is that special about supercritical aerofoil as far as construction is concerned? Because we, we understand that we do not want to accelerate the flow so fast that quickly it comes to Mach 1. I want to delay it. So what is the best way to do it? Don't make it so, so contoured so curved on the top 
make it flat, and at the end you make it sharp. So that was the philosophy. Philosophy was flattened. Upper, highly chambered aft section. That is, if I see normal aerofoil, something like this, and here it is. You see here there is a curvature, fast curvature. So when you are flying over critical Mach number, which may be very close to a drag divergence number, there is a shock wave at this point. In fact, it will be somewhere here as well. But when you have flattened it, then what is happening? This will happen somewhere here, and that too it will be a weak shock. That is how we are taking that advantage of less drag and delayed formation of shock so by increasing drag divergence Mach number. The person who should get credit, who, must, who gets credit, if I am not wrong, is Walki, a German, 1940, around that. Please Google and check that I have not done any mistake on spelling and all. In 1940, this concept of supercritical aerofoil, where the location of T by C max was around 50% of the chord. Please understand, it is a location. Location of. That is, the T by C maximum is almost around 50% of the chord if I measure this distance. Right? If I try to share T by C distribution of a supercritical aerofoil as compared to a conventional aerofoil, you will say T by C distribution for a supercritical aerofoil will be 10 to 15% more than a conventional aerofoil. Okay? But here I am talking about the location of T by C max. That is, location is delayed so that this shock which was coming early, it will come later and also it will become weak shock. This is the philosophy of that. And there are design advantages. Number one, of course, higher. Drag divergence back number. Number two is shock wave, which we have seen. Shock wave, much aft, much aft as compared to conventional aerofoil. Third one, reduce naturally shock wave is less lesser in strength, so reduced boundary layer shock interaction. So lesser drag. And fourth is thicker wing. Very designer is very happy about it. Thicker wing. So the more space and wing becomes lighter also. It is important to understand thicker wing it is easier to enforce rather than a thin wing we have been talking about critical mach number and drag divergence mach number if i again come back to critical mach number i can increase critical mach number one of the popular way is through sweep right you all know what is a sweep. This is the wing. And the flow is coming like this. If I now make it something like this. So 
the aerofoils are like this now. This is important. Please understand the aerofoils are now stacked like this. So now also, if this is the MAC seen by the wing, the normal component, which primarily decides the pressure distribution, lift and drag, that becomes M cos of lambda, or lambda is the sweep angle. And since M cos lambda is less than M infinity, so naturally, you know that it will automatically increase the critical Mach number. Right? For example, if critical Mach number here, the M infinity for which locally Mach equal to 1 happened, that is M critical, let's say that is 0.8. Now, with the sweep, because it is now cost lambda has come, I can go more than 0.8. So my critical Mach number will increase because of the sweep angle. But nothing comes free, you understand. Since the normal component has reduced, the lift also will reduce. Right? So those details we'll see in stability and control, part of design aspects. There's another way of also uh, visualizing roughly, we can say M critical will be whatever M infinity was there, divided by cos of 30 degrees for a swept wing. For a swept wing. Now this, M, this is M critical for an unswept wing. This is rough. Life is not so simple. The moment you put a sweep, the flow becomes three-dimensional. If the sweep is very large, there will be formation, thickening of boundary layer at the tip. That will cause stall. So these are a little bit of involved thing. But roughly, as an initial stage, if you know the M critical for a rectangular wing configuration, if it is 0.7, and if you are giving a sweep angle of 30 degree, so if roughly you assume that the M critical for the swept, for the swept wing, so this is sweep is equal to zero. So for sweep is equal to 30 degree, this will be M critical sweep equal to zero divided by cos of 30 degree. That's all. It's very, very rough, but it gives you an idea. There's another way of understanding what is the sweep doing. I repeat, when you give sweep, there are many three-dimensional flow issues. We are neglecting those things. We are just telling at the preliminary stage, how do I generate the initial conceptual number? There's another way you can see what the effect of sweep. Let us say this is the wing. Rectangular wing. Now, this is the C, and there will be a thickness, right? So it has particular T by C. What happens if I do it like this now? The flow is still coming like this. Now, what is happening? The C apparently becomes this because the flow is coming like this. So if this is C1 and this is C2, so initially it was T by C1, second case become T by C2. So which one is less? So initially the wing was like this, now I have tilted it like this. So the C becomes this. The C has increased. So C2 is more than C1. So this gentleman is less than unswept wing or same area. And since T by C for this swept wing is less, it will also increase the critical Mach number. Because we know as T by C increases, critical Mach number also reduces. Right? Because more and more flattening, more and more thicker wing, it will accelerate very fast. Right? So you know that M critical will decrease if T by C increases. So here T by C has reduced, so M critical will increase. That is also one of the easier way of checking the cross effect. For example, if you are giving a sweep, you simply see how much T by C reduction is there. See the chart, for this much T by C reduction, how much 
m critical increment will be there. So that is how we, we going, are going to use the small, small informations because please understand when I design an aircraft, nothing is final. Right? You are selecting a wing, you don't know what is the fuselage. You are selecting a tail, you don't know what is the engine. So, so these understandings are important to accelerate the process of synthesis. That is why this understanding is extremely important. And I strongly recommend whenever I re refer some book and all, or I say Google it, do it. Then only you will enjoy this course. Right? Thank you very much.